Well, good morning, good morning, Rock Church. How are we doing this morning? Hey, if you're in the back, I wanna invite you to come on in. Let's all stand as we prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Psalm 29 says, ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength Ascribe to the Lord, glory do his name, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. I wanna encourage us this morning that the holy God is here in this house, that his presence dwells in this house, that he's not some distant far off God, but he's here dwelling among his people. The word says that where two or more are gathered, that he's here with us. And so let's just lift up our hands this morning and welcome him in. Father, we thank you for your presence this morning in this house. Lord, we ask for an open heaven over us. Lord, we worship you in the splendor of your holiness, in the splendor of your glory this morning. God, we say you are good. There is no one like you. Lord, we ask that as our praises rise up like incense this morning, that your glory would come down and dwell with us. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, amen. Oh 
praises are for only you the heavens declare it is you it is you it is you we adore in this place it is you all our praises are for only you the heavens declare it is you only you sing holy holy one more time and holy holy is our god almighty and holy holy is his name alone yeah holy holy praise out this morning we're letting the praise out this morning we won't keep the praise bottled up anymore we won't keep the praise bottled up anymore you're worthy you're worthy you're worthy of a thousand generations you are worthy lord of all and unto you the slain and risen king we lift our voice with heaven singing worthy lord of all come on sing it out be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand
highest praises. Worthy 
just lift them up in this house. Worthy of it all. Holy is the Let's sing holy is the Lord.
Jesus, we worship you. We honor you in this house. We say you're worthy of it all. Yes, Jesus.
You are our living hope. All our trust is in you. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, Romans 15, verse 13 says this, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit, what no human can stir up in our own strength, He provides. And sometimes we need to factor God back into the equation of our circumstances, amen? So if, it's that, if that's you this morning and you need that God-empowered, God-inspired hope, would you lift your hands with me? Jesus, we love you and we thank you that you are the living hope, the God of hope, who gives us all peace, all joy, all hope as we trust in you, that we may abound in hope by the power, not our own willpower, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Release this hope and break off the power of despair and anxiety and fear today in Jesus' name and let freedom rule and reign because of the power of your spirit in this place and in every heart represented in this room and those watching online. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray that you would bless the rest of our service. Bless the preacher today, Lord. I pray that you would fill him with your wisdom and grace and give us the gift of hunger and openness to receive all that you have for us today. We love you and thank you. And everybody said... Amen. Can we thank the Lord this morning? Amen. Well, welcome to The Rock Church. My name is Matt. So good to be with you. If it is your first time here, we want to welcome you especially, and we have a gift for you. So right after this service in the Welcome Center in the lobby, be sure to stop by, receive your free gift this morning. Well, we got a couple announcements today. VBS is coming up very soon in, in June is coming up and this is going to be a powerful opportunity for our kids to encounter the living God and get radically transformed by the gospel. So I want to encourage you today, sign up your kids if, if you haven't already. And part two of that announcement is if you have a heart for children to serve them and help them encounter Jesus, we need volunteers. So please go online today and volunteer to serve at our VBS. Announcement number two is this discipleship level one registration is open. Who's gone through discipleship in this room? Powerful, transformational time. You'll get rooted and grounded in your identity in Christ. You'll go deeper than you've ever gone in the Lord. If you haven't done this, this is a powerful program. Please sign up for that today. Well, other than that, we got a great speaker for you this morning. Why don't you turn and greet one another? All right. Stop liking each other. Have a seat. It's so awesome to see you guys today. Beautiful, sunny day. How many of you are just like tired of the rain and this feels like we live in California. This is why we pay high rents. We don't pay high rent for cold weather. <clears throat> well, we, we have a great, by the way, Saturday was our day of prayer yesterday and it was powerful, powerful, powerful time. They, there were some sets. We did some live sets with the worship team that was unbelievable. So we're all pumped up and ready to go. We have a guest speaker today. Some of you already know him. Some of you won't. Uh, he's done our men's camp. He spoke here a couple times. Uh, Ray Larson, when I was 15, so he can verify the crazy stories that I tell you. When I was 15, my buddy, who was also a long-haired hippie, wandered into this church in Reading <clears throat> called Bethel. And he was the pastor. He had just come. He was 29, I think. Yeah, is that right? And, and we went into this church that was uh, not the new campus where Bethel is today because Ray built that campus. There was another spot on the Bluffs in Reading. And we wandered in, a couple hippie guys, to a church of, I don't know, not very many people. <clears throat> and we were like, this guy's radical. We like him because we had long hair and he talked radical. So we were like, we want to be radical. So we, we were on it, man. We were in the prayer chapel five days a week praying, praying. He would just open the door and look in and there'd be those hippie kids praying. And God began to move in the church in a big way. It went to thousands and the Lord did an amazing thing. So Ray, I would say Ray's a spiritual father. I think I have two spiritual fathers in my life. He taught us young bucks how to pray and he gave us the freedom to just sit in the front row and shout him down. I, there was a moment in that church where I think we run, won a bunch of our friends to Jesus. And I've said this to you before. All bunch of long-haired kids, from the back we looked like the women's ministry until we turned around. <laughs> and then it was like, whoa, those are not women. And uh, Ray never rebuked us. 
he just, we went up for every altar call. If you want to be a good wife, we were up there because we just wanted more of Jesus. And Ray was just like, hey, man, okay, come, in, come up here. So he's going to come. He's going to bring a word. Ray has like a prophetic edge to him about what the Lord is saying. His wife, Deborah, is in the front row. She's amazing powerhouse, powerhouse, prayed all day with us yesterday in the, in the time of prayer. So would you do me a favor? Let's give Ray Larson a big rock welcome as he comes to preach. Well, good morning. Would you just extend your, first of all, put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, I wanna receive everything you have for me today. Let's not make gathering together something, there's no value in regular. Just because you show up means nothing, it's faithful. You show up and you receive. Now stretch your hands toward me and give me permission to speak the word of the Lord. Would you do that? Say, I give you permission in Jesus' name. Rick and I met 40 years ago this month. You know, I, Deborah and I have great time. And last time we came here, there was the Pursuit Conference. Oh my goodness, talk about fired up for God, for the people of, you show up and you have a prayer meeting. Rick, imagine Rick walking in looking like Dominic, that hair flowing, <laughs> right in the front row. But you know, it's interesting, Rick, hear this, hear this, Cindy and Rick, and Cindy's from Bethel as well. There are people here that have been praying for this day in this house for 40 years. Did you know when Rick and I met, the Lord knew this day would come? Would you just lift your hands and thank God for faithfulness, that he's good, he keeps his word. He's the Alpha and the Omega, he knew it before it came. And this day was planned by the Lord in Jesus' name, amen. I'm excited because people are getting baptized. When people publicly profess their faith, oh, the demons shiver. Especially if you get it on camera, say la. Stand with me and I'm gonna read you a piece of word this morning. Second Samuel chapter 22, David's at the end of his life. By the way, I turned 70 this year. We, we went and saw, how many saw the Jesus Revolution? How many saw that movie? Anyway, my best friend and I who got saved together, and miraculously his daughter married my son. They met on a missions trip and never met. How many know that's fun? You know, treat your friends right because their kids might marry your kids. <laughs> he stands up the baptism. He goes, we were there. He said, bring it down, Dean. We don't really want people to know that. That's a long time ago. David sang to the Lord. Hang on, I gotta fix this. David sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from, his, from the hand of all his enemies, say all, all, and from the hand of Saul. You know, sometimes betrayal is clo too close, hello. It's not always a far away, you can't always predict it, it comes from nowhere. That's why you need to be praying for your friends and you pick who knows your life very carefully. Then the, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I shall take refuge. My shield. Yeah. I can't read that. <laughs> and my horn of my salvation. Hang on, I'm going to grab my glasses. Let's just, you know, <laughs> sometimes you're in denial. You know my friends that wear glasses, they just leave them on. I don't really want to wear glasses. Here we go. Listen to this. He is my stronghold, my refuge, my savior. From violent people you saved me. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise. I have been saved from my enemies. The waves of death swirled about me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. Talk about a writer. In my distress, here's the key scripture. I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cries came to his ears. So, Father, give us in this brief moment together your heart. Lord, you're going to do things in California no one imagines. I call out my home state in the name of Jesus. Devils be miserable. We call you to the depth places that you belong. 
We even call, <laughs> Lord, the diversity everybody's looking for is in heaven, where it says every tongue, every nation, every tribe sings to the Lord a new song. There's our diversity. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit says of the church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's a good day for to be a Christian. I've had the privilege of being a friend of this house. I'm not a guest speaker. I'm a friend. In fact, Deborah woke up this morning and said, we need to figure out how to fly there once a month just for worship. Amen. Don, can we, can we stay with you guys if we come? Okay, just, just getting, you know, try to keep the cost lower if we can. When you see threes in Scripture, you want to pay attention. How many times does God speak to Samuel? Three times. So I, interesting, I woke up Monday morning and I wasn't even beginning to pray about this house this week, quite honestly. Life is busy and you take a week at a time. And he leads me to this passage of Scripture. Then he leads me to two remarkable parallels. How many believe that uh, Jonah had quite an experience in his life? Would you agree with that? He says in Jonah chapter 2, in my distress... I call to the Lord. You know what's interesting about, unless you really know the story of Jonah, it looks like he just really messed himself up, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like Jonah just made really bad moves? When you know the story, there seems to be some reason, but not justification for his choices. Sometimes we make choices and we feel justified and they're not. Some of the choices we make have nothing to do with the heart of God or the reason of the Spirit, but we do. How many will raise your hand and say, from time to time I have been human? Lift your hand up. Back in 2016, I, I flew back from, I don't know where I was at, my wife met me, and we stayed downtown Austin, although we lived somewhere else in Austin. And these two drunk guys came up to me, and they wanted my wife to go with them, literally. Say stupid. My wife's not interested in kids. So anyway, they go, oh, please, let us have her, let us have her. And I said, gentlemen, you couldn't handle her. <laughs> hear me, hear me. You want a woman of God? You're not married. Rise up to be the man that can handle a true woman of God because they're fiery. They wake up in the middle of the night and say, get up. We're praying. Job's another story. But Job says the very same thing. In my distress, I call to the Lord. Now, one of our mistakes in these passages is that the word distress doesn't mean what it means in our day. It doesn't mean in our language. Distress means to be placed in a place where you are confined, restricted, unable to go where you're supposed to go. How many of you have ever woke up one day and said, man, I can't move like I should be moving? You know why you pray here? Because you're taking the lid off the supernatural purposes of God. You're saying, devil's at that door. You're not allowed in here when we pray. And when we worship, you know, we're, we're, we really love your worship team. You know what's really cool about this house? Whenever, it's true, whenever a house is truly creative, it's always changing. Every time I go, Rick's in a new office. <laughs> Every time I go, they change the platform. Why? Because when you're spirit-led, you're creative. Bide sheet bada, Elohim, asanayim, bahadets. Where God is moving, he is creative. I want to be more creative at 70 than I was at 29. The word there means to be confined, restricted, unmovable. It's the word sar. The second word out of Job is Sarah. How many know there's a Sarah in the Bible? You know what Sarah means? Rival wife. You want bad problems? Love two people. You get married, you love your spouse with all your heart, and you give your heart to no one else. Because you want problems, have two. You want to be restricted, have two. You want to feel like you can go nowhere, have two. Give your heart to someone exclusive. You've really worked at that together. You've really plowed through some stuff, and your love for one another is going to really break bondages. It's going to kick demonic forces out of the place. So the question you got to ask yourself is when you're in that restrictive place, when you're confined, you're going to ask the question they ask, how did I or we get here? 
How do we get here? Would you agree David loved God? Amen. Jonah loved God with his whole heart. He just didn't like the Assyrians. You ever been assigned to take care of something that you didn't like? Lift your hand up. God, give that to Rick. He's more mature. And you really want to go give it to Cindy. By the way, someday you need to hear Cindy's testimony. I'm, I'm not leading this church, and I don't want to lead. I may come once a month for worship. But she has an amazing story that makes the demons fear like nothing fears. Oh, my goodness. From methamphetamine to spirit-filled life. How often does that happen? Let's thank the Lord for the changes in her life. How did we get here? How did this happen? Listen to me. Hear this clearly. I'm not going to be long today because we're going to enjoy baptisms. But number one, don't spend all your time figuring out how you got there. Just admit you're there. Don't try to rationalize to the nth degree. What did I do to get here? I would agree. Would you agree Job did not deserve that? Jesus talks about healing. They said, this blind guy, why is he blind? Because of sin? No, that the glory of God might be manifested in him. Doesn't matter how you got here. It's how you get out of there. Oh, nod your head if you got that. Come on. I only got 15 minutes with you. Let's rock and roll. And I don't mean Elvis Presley. When I was 15, I got saved after a summer of horrible drug use. And I had long hair like Dominic and Rick. Can you see me in long hair? You can't even see me in hair today, let alone long hair. And there was a, someone had painted Frank Zappa on the side of our gymnasium. And people knew I was a drug dealer. I'd gotten busted for dealing drugs and all that sort of thing. And miraculously, they left me in school. Now they leave you in school no matter what you do. Pull a gun, you get to stay in school anymore. Jesus, change our culture Jesus, bring back laws and morality. Let me tell you something. Back in 1970, we were in the same place we are in America today. It just looked different. But it was the Jesus movement that shifted the culture, the politics, and the relationships. We are due for another Jesus revolution. In fact, I'll venture to say to you, it's already here. It's already here. I, have you seen all the, you know what? Young people are sitting in the first three rows of this building. And they're not coming and going, oh, I got to do my duty. I got to be regular. Mom's going to ask me if I went to church. They're, they got their lattes and their Holy Spirit infilling. It's working really well for them. <laughs> Love you, babe. You know the stuff I thought would destroy me? I look back and I laugh. Psalm chapter 2 says God laughs from heaven when the nations of the world strategize against him. He laughs. Really? Really? Because he is the Alpha and the Omega. Everything that's here today was already existing in the heart of God before the earth ever came. So how do you get out of there? Cry to the Lord. You know what was beautiful about this morning, men and women of God, is that there was a heart cry rising up like a fragrance. You ever read in Revelation where it says he smells the worship? He smells the praise. I hate garlic. My wife forces it upon me with great regularity because she's promised God I'd stay alive a lot longer. Hate garlic. When I get to heaven, I hope that, fra that fragrance does not rise to heaven. We want a sweet smell. Worship and praise is a sweet smell. When you love your spouse and you raise your kids. You know, this guy, Mark, I just met him for the first time. He's got an incredible ministry here. His three kids at 9, 15, and 21, or they're a little younger than that, right, Mark? They've already got callings all their lives. How many got children you've been calling their calling out? How many got children you've been calling them out? You know, when we adopted two of our kids, they told us, oh, you're a, you're a mega church pastor, and you're busy all the time, and they're adopted. They're going to have adoption issues. They're going to be mad because you're always working. My kids love God with their whole hearts, and they call out heaven and call out life like there is nothing. Your children are called of God. How many got children that are a little, I'm almost done. We're going to make it on time. How many, 
How many have children that aren't acting like the, the way you raised them right now? Anybody? Anybody got children that go, you pukes, what are you doing? I didn't raise you this way. This is not how I raised you. Sometimes when they run away, they come back and they annoy you. Because when they come back, they come back with a roaring fire that you cannot contain. It's not how you start. It's not how you middle. It's how you finish. Right? Okay, I'm going to get to my point. The word cry to the Lord, there's two words there. The first word is kara. Everybody say kara. It means to shout out. You know, sometimes when things aren't going right, you just need to go to God and say, God, I do not understand. And I'm in a room by myself because in the culture we are in today, they're going to think I need some sort of medical help. But I'm saying it's yours and you understand and you know what you're doing and it's all going to fill out wonderfully. There's some people in this room facing restrictions right now and the Holy Spirit told me last Monday, and you can bear witness, test the Spirit. Test anything that's said, that you're about ready to see what happens when you cry out to the Lord. Jonah says, in my distress, I cried. Would we agree that Jonah was in a very restrictive place? <laughs> Would we agree he wasn't moving much? Let me tell you, God's about ready to reuse you when he has to take some unique form of transportation to get you where you belong. <laughs> some of you have gotten where you got it. You go, how did I get here? And it's all the Holy Spirit. The other word there is an interesting word. It's, it's a fascinating word, but it's the word panal. And it means to intercede and pray. Jonah used the word panal. I, his distress response was to pray. I mean, if I had a situation, you know, one of the reasons why we have a prayer language, and if you don't have your prayer language, don't, don't argue about it, just get it. You're married to Mark. You need a prayer language, don't you? A oh, Mike. I'm sorry, Mark. No. Sorry, Mike. Mike, had, Mike and his wife have a unique ministry. But sometimes you just got to have the Holy Spirit do it like nobody can do it. When we were, and Rick was very part of that, when we got people saved, we got to baptize the first week. And we got them spirit-filled before some Christian radio host talks them out of it. If you don't believe it, just shut your mouth because you don't know what you're talking about. Can you hear me? When you're spirit-filled, you never debate it. The only time you debate it is when you're afraid of what might take control of you. You see, being filled with the Holy Spirit is not about how much the Holy Spirit you have. It's how much of you the Holy Spirit has. Right? I was driving my car this morning. I was on my way here, and I began to get some incredible dynamic. Are we okay with my honesty? Are we okay today? Because it's all you're going to get. I'm 70 years old. It's all you're going to get. <laughs> My wife just rebuked me. You know, you know when you're married, she can mouth the words and you know it. <laughs> there were times in my life when I would preach and she'd go. <laughs> and when it was really off, I she'd go, why did he say that? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord has set me free, hallelujah. I'll sing, but not for the melody. <laughs> Cry to the Lord. Cut off. Now, why does God allow us to go through restricted places? Maybe you've, you're called to expand on your business or your career, and it's, everything's coming against it. Maybe you're birthing something to change lives, and everything seems to butt up against you. But here's some amazing benefits, and then we're going to wrap this up. But when you go through tight places, it tends to redirect your heart and mind, right? Because the first tendency, and the enemy wants you to do this, is what did I do wrong? Are you glad you're serving a Savior that you're not based on performance? I don't serve the Lord to make him to make him like me. I serve him because he so changed me. I got to do something. I got to do something. You know, people are always thought about, a lot of my friends are retired and be blessed. They go, are you ever going to retire? What's said at home? It's just not, it's not, it wasn't cut on. I, I was in foster homes for a lot of years. You don't sit home. When you're in foster homes, you're never in the house. 
How many know we gather excesses to our lives? How many of uh, this last year decided to go on a diet because you realize you've been eating things that create excess? Anybody? Come on, get honest. Don't lie to yourself. We all do it. In the spirit realm, we gather excesses. We gather bitterness we shouldn't have. Let me tell you, I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't carry bitterness overnight the rest of my life. If, I, if God said you could be bitter, I wouldn't be. Because it just becomes baggage you cannot imagine. Excesses. You know, there's a lot of really good spirit. Rick, I was in Rick's office alone. Thank you, Addison, for those great grapes. If you're going to make me happy, give me grapes to eat. Um, and they weren't grapes of wrath. <laughs> and I'm reading through his books, right? Look at a guy's library. People are telling me what spiritual warfare, how to do spiritual warfare. I only know one way to do spiritual warfare. Forgive me, I'm not intelligent. I'm not bright. But when you're going over a cliff, right? And my mom tried to drive over a cliff twice with her kids in it. I'm here because God put the rock there to stop it. You don't have time to say, now demon in the north, demon in the south, demon in the east, I bind you in Jesus' name. You shout, Jesus! How many know that's the only name that bothers him? He don't care about your theology. The dead enemy doesn't care about your theology. I'm not discounting spiritual warfare because we believe in it. But we get too wrapped up in the warfare and forget why we're warring. Yeah. Are you with me? Madison, you with me? Good. Doesn't this generation have great names? Madison, Addison, <laughs> Kindred. What great names. Gone are the days of Rick, Randy, Ray, and Steve. Oh, God's so good. God's so good. You cry to the Lord. He begins to show you during this time. By the way, he doesn't cause it. God puts, it says he doesn't tempt anybody with evil. But in those moments when warfare is coming against you, if that's what you want to call it, when the enemy's trying to stop your forward movement, he begins to show you how you can become greater in his spirit. Some of the most important prayer, and there are varieties of prayer language, but some of the most important prayer language in my life came when I didn't know what else to say. And he begins to expand your capacity. Third, you get laser focus. I am married to a laser focused person. She wakes up going, today, what are we going after? Laser focus, amazing. Just a great gift to my life. He gives you laser focus. You begin to get rid of everything that doesn't matter. What doesn't matter, right? You know, when people die and they're going to heaven, by the way, I will declare these are the end times. How many will agree with me? It's the end times. By two reasons, either he's coming or I'm going. But it is the end times. Agreed? It's my end times. It may be 30 years from now, but she's a coming down the road. When, we were, when Rick was a young man, oh, you think Jesus is coming today? We'd pray that. Is he coming? God, Rick would say, who else can I win to Christ before he comes? I don't want to leave anybody. There'll be no wounded warriors. Passionate. Then flip that hair. <laughs> the stories he tells you is true. I, I walked downtown one time, and he's got three people cornered up against a tree preaching at him. Wow. You got one of the greatest preaching families in the world in your life. Now, it's here, here's where it gets sweet. Here's where it gets sweet. Don't focus that you're in distress. Focus on two things. Number one, how do we get out of this, right? God will show you what to pray. God will show you what to do. Uh, and by the way, we do bind demons in our home and those kinds of things. And, and when we go in a hotel room, we clean the room before we sleep there. We clean it because it's dirty. <laughs> and I want good sleep. You know, at 70, sleep is very, very important. Focus on how to get out of there. He says, in my distress, I cry to the Lord. And then the answer is, Lord, break us out. 
listen, look, listen to what this says, what David says at the end of this journey. You're going to love this. He says, He, the Lord, brought me into a spacious place. He rescued me. The word spacious place there means prosperity and abundance and freedom like you've never known. How many could use a little more prosperity? And prosperity is just not measured by money. In fact, that's the last piece. Prosperity is you got a happy family. I want you to know you guys are in serious trouble because we're praying for you every day. You're going to have an abundant marriage. This, these four ladies back there, it was four, right? Four ladies. They changed my life today. They don't come in with duty. They're walking. I mean, who skips in the church right? By the way, that was a very bad move. I almost went down. I didn't get the foot in the right place at the right time. You never know I played college sports, that's for sure. And they're happy. Happy, 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 happy. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. You're going to heaven. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And no weapon formed against you can prosper. It looks like it. How many kind of, kind of looks like it? I'm a friend of Morris Cirillo's. You probably heard that name. He's passed recently. And we did some crusades together. And I'm the best Morris Cirillo Im imitator in the world. He's sitting in, in this Modesto church. He walks in and he goes, I saw Satan here. And I said, you sit right there and don't move. Little five foot six guy. Wow. Wow. And they did. One time Morris Cirillo and... Every, every ministry has baggage. Every ministry has idiosyncrasies. Nobody's perfect because you get your eyes off people, get it on the Lord. See Jesus in people. Don't see people. Amen. What are they doing for the kingdom of God? What characteristic of Jesus has been expanded in their life today? Right? Oh, nod your head. That's just what you need to hear today. I do. Prosperity means what you touch goes Right? Abundance means that you have great life, great family, and yes, I believe in great money. There's nothing spiritual about being poor. There is not. I was telling your, your, uh, your music leaders, amazing, amazing view. I come back, people have babies. I need to come more so I'm a part of that, right? I was telling when I was a youth pastor making 1200 bucks a month, which in San Francisco is less than what 5000 is here now. Guy walks up to me and says, he was a doctor, he says, I'm leaving, I'm leaving town. I own 80%, I only owe 20% on this house. Would you be interested in taking over the note at 20% and taking the equity? Do I need to pray about that? A lot of that's about to happen. Release the finances. Release the finances. Abundance. Job says, the Lord has made wide open places for me. It's speculated that Job's journey was 20 years. Man, we have one conflict in our lives for one minute. We're whining. You know what I'm saying? We're whining. You got to sing to the Lord. You got to declare his... Uh, Matthew, Matthew 13, uh, 13, 7, 13, and 14, it says, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. How many have ever read that? I love the English, but the English, so five people have been reading the Bible. We need to pick that up a little bit. We need to increase that a little bit. Come on, laugh at yourself. It says, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. How many would like to hear the Hebrew translation of that? Seven, okay, I'll, well, I'll see you for seven after church and share it with you. Um, it says, the kingdom of God breaks forth. And those who are kingdom members break forth with it. Let me say it again. The kingdom of God is breaking forth. And those who are of the kingdom break forth with it. So here's my recommendations to you today, and then we'll bring close. Number one, how do you live this victory? Get your song back. I'm, not, I'm 16, 1971, hair like Rick had, hair like Dominic had. 
And I'm preaching in Mexico in a place called San Luis Potosí, in a prison. There's a deaf mute that's gone to prison. How does a deaf mute guy end up in prison? Can't say anything, can't. Anyway, I give an altar call and about, you know, no one's unsaved in prison, right? Some of that's reality. But this deaf mute man comes back and drops to his knees. Never spoke a word, never heard a word. I lay my hands on him. I say, Jesus, reveal yourself to him. And this guy that never, ever heard a word and never heard a song sang a perfect pitched song to the Lord. A deaf and mute man sang unto the Lord. You know what we need back in this house and every house in America? Let's not look at California's government. Let's not look at what, pray about all that stuff. But the song of the Lord will begin to bring transformation everywhere it goes. Worship and praise, but your personal song alone when you're with him. It doesn't, it's great when you worship with people around you. But what's greater is when the song grows in your life in the cave of Abdullam. David's walking to the cave saying, I am the man of God. I am the man of God. And I bring praises to your name. We need to get our, we need to, decibels, is that the word? We need to get our, thanks Rick. We need to get our spiritual decibels up. You need to sing no matter what you're going through unto the Lord. Now I know we need to go to baptisms, but I want to, uh, the other story I'll tell you about is last week in, in uh, Georgia, a bunch of Georgia students got on a campus and began to worship the Lord. Something amazing happened. People were getting saved all over. They had to bring a pickup truck and fill it full of water and baptize people right there in the back of a pickup truck. In the back of a pickup truck, people are getting baptized. Let me tell you, the Spirit of God is moving. And immorality, <laughs> people go, what do you think about fur? Furries, whatever that is, where people act like dogs and animals. They're always asked, what do you think of furries? They just need the flurry of the Lord to get rid of that furry mindset. <laughs> By the way, I'm not a political analyst. So the Lord spoke to me last Monday morning. Thank you for your patience with me, and we're going to get to baptisms. But I want to say to you, the Lord revealed to me that a bunch of people are about ready to break out. They're about ready to leave their restricted place. First of all, I want to deal with this house for a minute. There are dimensions that the Lord has revealed to Deborah and I about the rock. And you may have known it before I do. But there are breakouts coming in this house like you've never known before. Amen. So what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to all stand with me for just a moment. Would you stand? And before I pray for people, and we're going to go on with baptism, let me tell you. You can baptize all you want. If I'm praying with people, I'm praying with people. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, yeah. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Isn't he great? Yeah. Doesn't he have a good, he has a, yeah. he has a good looking son. So how do we, how do we, Dom, you can come out. Come on, Dom. What are you, don't be avoiding me, Dom. <laughs> I'm just glad he worships the Lord like he does. There's a new song coming to this house. We're not writing or inventing that song. We're responding to his presence. And what I mean by song, all over the valley, this is going to be known for a place of transformation. Rick will tell you, there came a point at Bethel, and our old building was in a weird place. People would be driving by, and they would hear the song of the Lord and pull in, come to church and get saved. You know, I, yeah, we're supposed to witness and Billy Dory's taught us to do that well. But we need that kind of supernatural thing. Like in the early days of the church, they'd be meeting in houses and neighbors would come in and get healed. Did you know there's a miracle we just heard about right now? A guy had a tumor on his neck. And it's coming out of the neck. It's not going away. It's being expunged. Everybody say expunged. It's being expunged from the body. How many are ready for darkness and discouragement and lies to be expunged? We need to have it ooze. Now, after done, if I'm going to pray, I'll probably take you out there so we're not interrupting what Rick's doing. 
But I want you to lift your hands and I want you just to shout out as a house together. We cry to the Lord. Sometimes you cry in desperation. Teresa, who just lost her husband and buried him last week, she's not crying in desperation. She's crying for the mercy of God. Sometimes you cry because he's merciful. Sometimes you cry because he's breaking through. And sometimes you cry because I don't know what to do. So lift your hands with me. Come on. There's an anointing coming to this house. There's going to be a release of healing. Some of you are going to be moving into gifts of healing. There's three people that are going to begin to be released in the word of knowledge where they bring life and liberty to people. No, you're not going to get the platform. Get over that. Real ministry is one-to-one, right? How many agree? What can we do to sing? What can we do to sing a song? Can we do that real quickly? Thank you. Are you taking my thing? Leave that there. I need it, please. Come on. Follow the song. I'm tone deaf and I can follow it. Oh, you are yeah. Come you on. Are freedom. Yeah. You are mighty to save this Come on. This morning. is the song of the Lord. Let's go. Let's you go. You are healing. You are freedom. You are mighty to save Keep this Come on. morning. Go, 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 go. You Lord are healing. Come on. You, you are, are freedom. Yeah. You are mighty to save this morning. You are healing. You are freedom. You are mighty to save. So we lift our song. We lift our voice to the worthy King, the worthy King. We Everybody, there's a story of a king that was about ready to get deliverance. And the prophet said, take your arrows and strike them against the ground. You're with me, ma'am. He does this. He says, there's no deliverance because if it was me, I want deliverance. I'd have struck and struck and struck. Let's strike. Come on, let's strike right now. Go again. Let's go. Oh. I want to make this personal before we go to baptisms. If you've been restricted, you're in a tight place. It may be your physical health. It may be something in your marriage. We've all got challenges in our marriages. It may be in your business. And you're saying that word was for me today. And I'm gonna I'm gonna receive my breakout. You're shouting with Ray Larson, break me out, Lord. If that's you, I want you to get out of your seat and run here right now. Your coming forward is the release that you need. Come on, it's time to break out. I need a breakout. It's time to go to the next place. Yeah, help your friends. You need to help your friends. Grab your friend and get their hand up here. Come on. There's some with a diagnosis of cancer. It's liver cancer, and the Lord is saying today, He's healing your liver in Jesus' name. There's someone here, your spouse has left, and the Lord's told you, you're not to divorce. God's gonna break that out in Jesus' name. Everybody right here, lift your hands up, lift your hands up, lift your hands up. Everybody stretch your hands toward the people in the front. We declare in Jesus' name, it's a breakout moment. This time next year, get a journal and write it down because you're gonna talk about the miracles of God that like David, like Job. Some of you, it's 20 years old and it's breakout time. 
He's about ready to give you wide open places. Lift your hands up, say, I receive the wide open place. It's my time. It's my time. I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord. Come on, pray the Spirit with me. Sing in the Lord. Sing the song of the Lord. It's your freedom, Lord. There is freedom. There is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Oh, there is freedom. Say, lift your eyes. Oh, lift your eyes to Jesus. Someone here, if it doesn't reverse this week, there's devastation. Where are you? If it doesn't release this week, God's gonna mark your life that what should be devastating will be miraculous and he'll get all the glory. Where are you? Where are you? Who is that? It's gotta be this week. You, you, you mark this week, Lord. If you, is that you, buddy? Oh, you just got your hand up. Okay, anybody? Where do I see you? If you've got physical sickness in your body, lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Hear me. My wife had cancer in 2010, and God delivered her. Thank God for doctors, but we need a deliverer. Back in 2004, my son was driving his a forerunner, and he flipped it and broke his back. They called me and said, you better get here. We're going to have to put him in a... We st I grabbed the phone and I prayed over the phone and I said, put it on speaker. And I prayed out loud. They took her from x-ray to the MRI and in between the x-ray and the MRI, his body was completely restored. <laughs> There's healing, healing, deliverance, deliverance. This church, I'm gonna let you go. But this house of the Lord is going to be known for the joy. How many know this? This? How many know that that Contra Costa County needs to experience joy? They need hope. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to turn over to Rick. Hear me. God's picked Contra Costa County for a major move of God that'll spread to the nations. Did you know there's people in this room right now that God's gonna give an idea to to start a business that's gonna become multi-millions, multi-millions. And he's, they're gonna be known. You know, Elon Musk is a great guy. He just lacks one thing, the wisdom and the power of God. Can you imagine a, a spirit-filled version of that? Okay, I'm gonna give you three pieces of homework. Number one, pray in the spirit every day. Drive in your car, just pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit. Number two, every time an idea comes your way that's trying to put you back in the box you're getting out of, declare it's over in Jesus' name. This is risky. How many have a real, don't be embarrassed, a real financial crisis right now in your life? Lift your hand up. I'm not, I'm not gonna ask how, I'm not gonna ask what. There was a time in our lives because of stolen business. Hello. If you knew my story, a major business was taken from me. Part of that's because I was stupid. I mean, a stupid doesn't need to stay stupid. Thank you for laughing at that. People are afraid to laugh at themselves. Let me tell you, I grew up in group homes. I'm a, my mom was a heroin addict. I was a preemie baby in 1954. Heroin babies didn't live when they were born at Two, two and a half months early. 
You and I are miracles. We're scary miracles. We're the kind of miracle where the devil's saying, please don't figure it out. Don't get it in your brain because you're going to do deep damage to my kingdom. What a joke. Lift your hand up if you raise your hand. Father, we release financial reversal. I speak over this house reversal of fortune. From restricted, limited, and lost. There's someone here God really wants to expand your finances, but you know what? You gotta learn to be a giver first. God doesn't put money in your hands that you don't give away. God wants to release. Release. I'm sorry about the baptisms, I'm gonna quit. But your life's important to me, more than you could ever know how important your life is to me. Of all the places I preach in America, I'm more excited about here than anywhere else. My wife's talking about coming once a month. I gotta figure that out, don't I? So Lord, release in Jesus' name. Everybody lift your hands one more time. You stay for baptisms, don't be dashing off. Say, I receive the word of the Lord. And I'm gonna embrace the disciplines needed in the spirit to bring that about. And I just wanna be God's person. Say, I'm God's son. I'm God's daughter. And I'm gonna walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Pastor Rick, I'm sorry. You can go ahead and have a seat real quick. We're gonna see a few baptisms today. How many of you don't wanna live in the belly of a well? Yeah, I was, he was preaching, I was Lord, get us out of the belly of the well. And I was thinking about as he's going out of the belly of the well, he, the purpose is to preach the gospel. And so Lord, do that in, in this region, just set the churches free to be all that they're called to be. Thank you, Pastor Ray. Uh, you should have seen him at 29. This is crazy. Uh, in a good way. We're going we're gonna to witness some baptisms. And if you've never witnessed our baptisms before, we're, we're not a quiet church about it. So when they come out of that water, let's rejoice with them. Amen. You can even stand again. Come on. Let's stand together. And we're going to worship and watch this go down. so hard to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry all victory perfection could never
Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your victory. Thank you that in you there is victory, there is joy, there is hope, and there is life. God, we thank you for that powerful word prophesied over our church family today. Help us to receive it and run with it. Thank you for the baptisms, dedications to follow you and submit to you for all of their days. God, I pray that that would inspire us to go out into the world and live wholeheartedly as disciples and friends of Jesus Christ. We love you, praise you, thank you, and everybody said. Can we thank the Lord one more time? And thank you, Pastor Ray, for being with us. Amazing. Well, thank you for joining us today. A couple quick things. If you have an offering, you could put that in the white boxes in the back or give online. If you need prayer for anything, we have an amazing prayer team. We'll see you soon.